Hello and welcome to BB Book Buzz. We're here for the March edition and I've got Casey Tuica and Jacqueline Powers with me. Um, and as always, we're here to help you find your next great read. Today, we're gonna start with Casey. <laughs> All right. Um, my book is called Envy of Angels by Matt Wallace. It is, um, you can see it's a little bit of a shorter book. Um, it's the first in a series. Um, and basically, <laughs> Uh, I don't know how well you guys can see the cover, but it is angel wings with chicken nuggets. <laughs> and um, I had never heard of this book uh, until it was suggested to me. And basically it is a catering company for supernatural beings in New York City. Okay. Um, and there are two new chefs at the catering company who have no idea that they're nothing, it's anything but just a really high-end catering company okay. um and they are being kept in the dark because they've just come in for the one day the one event and things go a little awry and they find out that they are doing catering for basically a group of devils there are different groups of devils in the in the country between the devils and the government <laughs> and part of the way the government is trying to appease the devils is they want them to serve angel as part of the uh, meal. Uh, oh. Um, <laughs> and course. the group is obviously like, oh my God, we cannot kill an angel. Like, this is the worst thing ever, <laughs> even if we're not necessarily religious people. Like, you can't just murder an angel. So they figure out, um, they, they figure out a way to communicate with it and figure out that basically the angel tastes like really fancy chicken nuggets. <laughs> that is the flavor profile. And since this isn't real earth, there is a basically kind of a kfc you know secret ingredient and this that's the one they taste like so they go to try and break into the corporate headquarters and find the recipe the corporate headquarters of the are... kfc -esque oh, place, -esque place yeah. <laughs> to um to see if they can find the hidden recipe so they can fool the devils and not kill the angel um and that's basically the premise um and the book was sold to me literally as supernatural catering company Angels taste like chicken nuggets. <laughs> Here, read this. And I wasn't entirely mm. sold, but it is it is a very like bonkers is the only word I can describe this book with. <laughs> it, it is like so weird. Wait, no, Kate, Casey, as you all know, is 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 the the head of youth service, yes. services, but this is not no, a YA book. This is not a this YA book. book. Very much an adult book, um, <laughs> full of swear words, full <laughs> of some really just it's very, very strange. Um, Karen before this asked me, you know, what genre would this book be? And I was like, supernatural, but just weird. <laughs> is um, it funny? It's hilarious. Okay. It is really <laughs> funny because everything is kind of satire tongue in cheek told. Um, the characters are all like weird, kind of overdone, like tropes and archetypes of like kind of the heroes and stuff. And, um, it's just, it's really strange, but it's, it's a quick read. Um, I read it in one night, which was great because I was having, I was in one of those reading slumps you can get where I couldn't read anything. And I read this in one night and, yeah, um, right back <laughs> yeah, and it's, it, it was just like, I finished reading it and I was like, I turned to my two roommates and I was like, you would hate this book <laughs> and you absolutely have to read this book because it is one of those books that like, yeah, you're, it's you're weird. Gonna you gotta like go on for the ride. You gotta just roll with it. Um, <laughs> And it's a, it is the first in a series. I think there's, it's a completed series. Um, this book came out in 2015. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm pretty sure she, he's done a, like a book a year since. Um, and I cannot wait to read the rest of them. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm kind of holding off though, because I'm like, I'm going to use them as those books, like when I have the slump or something as something to get me back. Something into, to look forward to. To, yeah. To, yeah. to get back into and look forward to. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know was sold on it with the weird and it's like that's what, not exactly what it is what was but it that kept you turning the pages was it like the humor was it the characters? it was, was it, the... it was mostly the um it was honestly the characters there's there's a shockingly large cast for the size of the book right um but you know the combination of the the characters all being hilarious and like the people who already work at the catering company are just so blase about all this really <laughs> weird you know like they have the back room where you usually like have canned goods and stuff and instead it's like canned monsters and you mm. open it and like things come out of there that can like kill you which is how one of them one of the new guys finds out about 
everything. Right. He goes looking because he's like, oh, I'll just grab the can instead of asking and then almost gets murdered. Um, and it is a little gory at parts. Like it's a li- there's a little bit of like kind of body humor gore that can get a little much. So you have to, but it's pretty quick. It moves on. Um, it feels like it would be that almost like that horror movie gore where you it's so blatantly yes, it fake is. that you're it like, is. <laughs> you know, like you know the the opening scene um, is their kind of crack team, um, you know, going to basically find like giant mantis eggs, <laughs> and like immediately in the beginning, like I think one of them loses an arm. Like there's just all this, but then it's like, oh, he goes right. to like the supernatural hero, and his arm his arm is back. Right. And it's fine. So it's it's like, um, but I I just so it was a combination, and also I really want like the plot actually does carry a lot of it. Like the weird thing about the angel, and, the, and you're like, you guys can actually pull this off. Like, what's going to happen if you? Because when I read it, I had no idea it was a series right. when I read the first one. Because nowhere on this book does it say like first in a series or anything. Um, so it was after that when it when it ended it does have a complete ending like it is a, a story within itself you know the story of this particular event but you can tell that the character's story is yeah. not over mm-hmm. and so then i went and looked it up and there's like seven books in the series something oh, like that okay. and is it all the catering company it is all oh, okay. the catering company okay. and it just has different like capers it's the- it does sound like there will be and i i you know looking back at it i think they are setting some stuff up in this that are a bigger like arc mm, that'll be the arts. whole yeah that'll be the right. whole series and even some stuff with like however you know the government is kind of involved in all this and mm-hmm. so there's there's some conspiracy-ish things floating um so i suspect there will be kind of an overarching right. plot as well as like the individual it stories, feels like a so. movie or a it's, show i was gonna <laughs> say it seems like a movie and especially i feel all like the things like what cocaine bear and yeah i feel like it would make a right really now. good like probably mini <laughs> mini series right. yeah. yeah because yeah. i mean you wouldn't need a whole lot of episodes to do each individual right. book like this right. could probably be two solid episodes of something so you could probably right. do like okay. you know one or two series and do it so um mm-hmm. i never heard of i never heard of him and i never heard of the series even though i read a lot of tour dot tours books um tour.com yeah this is tour.com but just even general tour stuff i really love what they're doing so i was surprised i'd never heard of him or the book um when it got handed to me but i'm really glad it did and i'm really glad i bought it because it was it was a weird blast but and we now have that one on yes we now have this one on um overdrive Libby, um and then the audiobook is on Hoopla. Okay. And the audiobook of the first three are actually on Hoopla. Okay. Um, so I'm going to try listening to book yeah, two and be see how... See they're they're only about four hours to listen to. Mm-hmm. So it's a nice, nice short audio. So I'm going to, I'm going to try the next one on audio and see. All right. I've seen that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm really curious too, to see you definitely need the right narrator mm. as, yes. on an audio book yes, for these books to, to make it pop in the way it needs to. So, so yeah, right. Envy of Angels, Matt Wallace. Very Great. cool. Sounds like a rollicking ride. Yes. And Jackie, what do you have? So I, I did a Beth move where I like taped the cover because my book is out. <laughs> <laughs> this is beautiful. I this is the Twyford Code. This nice is um, So the Twyford Code by Janice Hallett. Um, it's pretty popular right now. Mm-hmm. Um, sh- this is her second novel. Um, this one feels a little under the radar. Like I think it's better than it's... Um, it doesn't have too many holds right now, so maybe it will now <laughs> once I talk, <laughs> once everyone sees this. Um, so this is this one was really really hard to write a talk for because I want to very specifically not tell certain aspects of it. It's very plot driven, um, so it's a mystery. It's mm-hmm. set in England. It's the present day, and it's told by way of transcripts of two hundred audio files recorded on an iPhone four. Okay. <laughs> so it takes place over 11 weeks. So it's sort of like an epistolary novel, but mm-hmm. it's right. like a modern, a modern take modern. on that. Yeah. Right. Um, <clears throat> so it is the present, but uh, Stephen Smith, Smithy, little Smithy, who's doing the recordings, also gives a lot of backstory mm-hmm. in these, but when he's doing these recordings. So you, as he's talking, the reader discovers that he is uh, recently released from being in prison for a decade. Mm-hmm. He's been rejected by this son that he didn't know he had. Mm -hmm. who's an adult now Mm -hmm. he's in his Stephen is in his 50s kind of mid 50s um and he's kind of he's at this loose end he's really kind of lonely he doesn't really know what he's doing and he ends up becoming 
obsessed with this situation that happened to him 40 years ago. So his teacher, Miss Isles, and what the funny part of this book is the um, the transcript. Sometimes the words get jumbled because it's it's uh, it's being okay. um, you are reading the transcript. So it's uh, some a machine that had done the transcription. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it doesn't know. So her name often looks like missiles, like a <laughs> like a missile, and um, <laughs> it's it would takes a minute to realize he's talking about a person. Because finally, at some point, they say Miss Alice Isles, and you're like, oh, okay, it's <laughs> it's a lady. Yeah. So she had vanished on a class field trip after a class field trip forty years ago, and this the audio is sort of his record of this of him go looking into this inquiry and a lot of it is much of it for the first part at least is directed at his parole officer mm -hmm. he keeps talking about maxine maxine you know this maxine that like i want you to know i'm doing this and it's funny because you don't actually find out who maxine is for a while and then you find out she's the parole officer um so he, the, the, he starts this inquiry and he looks up all these friends that were um, these former classmates of his that were in this class. And the, it was a remedial English class. They were, they were um, not, they, they were getting additional help with, with English mm -hmm. and reading. So they, uh, he, he kind of get, tries to get them back together. And the, the, these people were really just classmates. They weren't right. like friends, friends. So it's kind of a little like, <laughs> He just shows up out of nowhere 40 years and is like, what about that teacher that disappeared? So there's the Twyford Code part um, comes from this book that he comes across and gives to this teacher, Miss Isles. And it's um, written by this woman called Edith Twyford, who is a pastiche of Enid Blyton. Right. Um, so she's, con she's in the book, they describe her as twee and much maligned. Um, <laughs> so she supposedly put all these treasonous coded secrets in her children's books in during oh, World War II. Okay. So she is reviled now okay. in like literary circles in the present. Um, so he's beca he becomes fixated on this and, and thinks that the teacher's di um, disappearance has something to do with this book and this uh, author and there okay. a lot. So, it, so is it a literary mystery? I mean, is it, does the book come, do the books come into the? Yes. Okay. Yes. So he gets the help from Lucy, a librarian. Ooh. <laughs> and <laughs> she tries to help him decipher this code and they become very close. And there's supposedly like a treasure at the end. And it's mm -hmm. it's so uh, there's really two appeals to this book. Um, the first is that it's really a really good, true like mystery. Yeah. It's quite elaborate mm -hmm. um it's a really kind of almost like a scavenger hunt okay. and there's real clues <laughs> bless you there's <sighs> real clues to be followed like i think you could honestly if you read this way and i don't um you could sit down and try and figure it out yourself like it's oh, one of those where they okay. kind of give yep. you enough information that you there isn't something happening off stage so much as a lot of the information is fictional, right? But they do they do kind of give it to you. There's some historical stuff, but um, it's there's anagrams and right. red herrings. So it's a puzzling and kind of It's mystery. a puzzle. There's yeah. hidden pictures mm -hmm. and meanings and things like that. It's really ingenious and it's delightful. Um, and if you you know kind of if you like puzzles and history and literature, like you could really I could see getting really into that part. Um, but I, I mean, I kind of liked, I liked that part, but mm -hmm. I tend to read for character. And I thought the characters in this book were great because Stephen, you know, despite being a criminal, <laughs> uh, is really quite likable. Mm -hmm. He's very self-deprecating. He often refers to the therapy that he had in prison and it's, you know, it seems to have really helped him. He's kind of, he's kind of very self-aware. He knows that he, he had a very difficult childhood and sort of has come to understand why like this has happened like he ended up the way he 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 was mm -hmm. um he's adamant that he doesn't want to return to prison um he steers clear try you know it's clear that he's trying to steer away from anyone in that world mm -hmm. anymore and he, it's really endearing but he's um his literacy is somewhat limited he claims he, he it's true but he really only learned to read in prison mm -hmm. and so a lot of the book he talks about all the coping mechanisms that he used um Mm -hmm. throughout life to mm -hmm. kind of hide the fact that he couldn't really meaningfully read right. um, and he still kind of does it he'll say oh I forgot my glasses to avoid reading anything really complex right um, out loud mm 
Um, but the secondary characters are also great. And so they come through because he often records people without sometimes with their permission and sometimes without their permission. <laughs> right. um, and so you'll get their whole actual conversation directly. Right. And then sometimes he will describe them or reminisce about them or talk about, you know, the history. Um, but the librarian is lovely. She is a really this perfect representation of the profession. She's helpful. She's kind. She's not judgmental. She's like all the things that we, she gets kind of obsessed with it in the way that like we would get obsessed because it's like now you just want to know the answer. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's out there somewhere. It's out there. Yeah, she's going to find this. But in the secondary characters, like his friend, the friend group, the other mm -hmm. students are really interesting and um, kind of just this motley assortment of, of people. Right. But it's, yeah, so it's plot and character. It is, I think I said, to, it's set in England and it goes to different parts of the country. I feel like mostly in London, but eh, it goes around. Um, and it's just a fun little journey. And it's, there's a lot of surprises. There's okay. a lot, there's, <laughs> there's a lot I can't say. Yeah. You should go <laughs> on the journey yourself. Absolutely. Um, but it's yeah, well worth about it. Mysteries. Yes. And this one was really creative. Um, I feel like I read that her first book was not super well received, um, but I didn't really look into into it. I, um, so I think this was a, probably a really effective second outing. Great. Um, Is it, um, it sounds a little, I mean, I'm not saying it's like Anthony Horowitz, but I'm getting a little bit of the twists and the turns and the, I know it's not meta like that. But. No, but it's definitely something like, I bet he read this and was like, ooh. Right, yeah. <laughs> I wish I had thought of that because it's a really creative right. frame. It's mm -hmm. right. And the and the frame is really important. Mm -hmm. It's not, um, it's, an, it's not just like to be different. Clever. It's not yeah. just to be clever. Like it's part mm. of the story and there's mm. reasons for it and everything. Right. And it's, uh, it's very well done, really well done. Great. So that was The Twyford Code by Janice Hallett. All right. All right. Oh, now Karen's going to swear. Now I'm going to not. I? No, I'm going to not no, swear. Not to. And I'm even going to cover, put my finger over the bad <laughs> word on the book. Um, and this is, I didn't realize that yours was a prison story because this is also oh. about, um, but I'll, I'm, I'm getting to that. Anyway, mm -hmm. this is a book called Didn't Nobody Give a Blank What Happened to Carlotta? And, um, it's by James Hanahan. Um, I think it's, he's written some oh, delicious something. I'm sorry, I can't, I've just forgotten the other word in that title. But anyway, uh, this is at least his second book. This one is absolutely for those of you who love a good character study. Mm. Um, told from the inside out, hilarious, no holds barred, stream of consciousness. Um, and this is Carlotta's story. Um, <clears throat> and most of it centers around the day that she gets out of prison. Um, she's done a 20 year stint for a shooting in a liquor store that she didn't do, but through kind of chronic bad luck, she was sort of adjacent to okay. and got swept up in. Um, and that 20 years, some time got added on because of stuff that happened inside. Um, has been very eventful and not in good ways, as you might imagine, um, except maybe for her relationship with Frenzy, who is her man. Um, and endless, there, there were endless stints in the shoe, which is, you know, solitary confinement. Um, and they were for her own protection. And the reason they were for her own protection is because when Carlotta went into prison, she was Dustin, which is now her dead name. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the many things that happened to her in prison is that she learned who she really was. She, she, you know, grew into who she really was. Um, so after the indignity of, I think, I think when we first meet her, she's in her like fifth or sixth parole hearing and she's had all these ones that have not gotten her out. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and she's a force where she's forced to identify herself with her dead dead name and relive the day of the crime and all of the kind of indignities that go along with parole hearings, um, she does get out. And in getting out, Carlotta is obviously also coming out, right? right. She is having to go back into society a different person, literally, mm -hmm. in so many ways than she went in. Um, uh, so she's coming out. She's she's getting out, she's coming out, she's having, she's going through New York City, her beloved, she's from New York, she's okay. been upstate in Ithaca. 
She is, uh, you know, wandering, well, not wandering, traveling the streets of New York to get back to Brooklyn, which was her home. And she hasn't been there in 20 years. And she's getting trying to get her head around how much of everything has changed in that 20 years. Um, and not only that, but then everyone she knows has to get their heads around her. Right. Um, so this is all kind of told in like a running commentary. It's just the voice is everything in this mm. book, and it's it's fantastic. I mean, the best thing I've read like that in a long time. Um, <clears throat> you know, so she's you're you're getting her running commentary, and somebody compared this to like James Joyce's Ulysses as he walks through, and I was like, ah, please don't, because I'm not a big Joyce fan, but <laughs> but the idea is there, right? right? Um, you know, all these new buildings, there's a subway system that doesn't take tokens anymore. There's all these people that are lost in their cell phones and you know, they weren't even, they didn't even exist really when she mm -hmm. went in. Um, her home borough of Brooklyn is gentrified, of course, mm -hmm. much whiter than it used to be. She talks us through her meetings with people in her life. And you're not, it's not all like just inner monologue. She, there are conversations right. and you are, there is also a narrator's voice that is sort of there, but mostly it's Carlotta. But anyway, so she's, you know, she finds her her goes back to her family who are throwing this massive party and she's like turned, she's like walking into this house and there's this and it turns out to be a wake um and there's people drinking and doing all kinds of things and she's like looking for her mother and her mother it turns out has fallen into basically into she she's she's she has dementia and oh. she can't even speak and she's in a wheelchair and this is the this is one of the people who she thought would be an ally and there mm -hmm. she is yeah. unable to even connect um her son has grown into a young man who's not really sure he wants to get to know his mom because he was expecting a dad mm -hmm. and her best friend she connects with who she but she, they haven't been in contact for like at least a decade of her prison time and so you know there's all kinds of things to work out there so there's all these you know she's mm -hmm walking through life and making these contacts. Most of this happens in a day. Um, some of it, some of it, um, it, there's a little bit of a, there's a little bit in prison and there's a little bit at the end, which is, I'm not going to talk about, but. but are there flashbacks? <clears throat> or like, is that how you get this? She, she's, she's just, she's, she's just, just inner, talking. Inner monologue. Yeah. She's remembering things. You're, you it's know, very you're similar on. actually. Like yeah. she's just doing it for a different yeah in a different format mm -hmm. yeah it's you know she's remembering what you know things that frenzy had said frenzy mm -hmm. is her her man on the inside yeah um she's remembering things that frenzy had said to her and a piece of advice he'd given her she's remembering the traumas um you know because she was beaten she was raped there you know she so all those things are coming to you as mm -hmm. she like they do in your own brain yeah, as you're right. like thinking through things um she's passionate she's dramatic she's broken but she's strong she's joyous she's in despair she's looking you straight in the eye and telling it like it is and she's giving you the side eye and like trying to hold her tongue and control her anger manage all of that you're getting all of this and along with all of that she's hilarious mm -hmm. I and mean, she is just very very funny mm -hmm. i would if i could read you something out of this but a swear words were also a problem <laughs> and b um I couldn't even begin to do justice to her voice. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a fantastic voice. And I'll, and I'll say here, <clears throat> excuse me, I did listen um, for a little while and the audio has the author, James Hanahan, playing the kind of narrator. You later find out, and this is kind of a little weird and not, I can, I think I can say it without getting, giving much away that she wrote this book in conjunction with a, a prison like counselor mm. and and for a long time when I was listening and reading the book I would think god there's this voice that doesn't really sound like her and indeed it is that narrator it's the oh. guy who's helping her write the book write it. Okay. um <clears throat> and then in the audio so the, so the author reads that is reading that sort of narrator's voice mm -hmm. and it is and um, I don't know if you know the TV personality, Flame Monroe, she, he, he, I believe he goes by he, is um, the, the voice of Carlotta in the okay. book. So the problem I had with the audio was not either of the, of the readers particularly, but just the fact that they're trying to weave it in 
like within a sentence, you've got two people trying to to speak mm. at this, you know, not at the same time, but they're they're alternating very quickly, and it it's not done. It doesn't really weave together very well. Mm. Okay. So I was disappointed in the audio because it could have been really good, and this could make like an amazing like one person show mm -hmm. on stage. If you get the right person. Yeah. Oh my god, it it's like all it about the right the person. right person. It's yeah. all yeah. about the right person. Yeah. So. Um, He's written this book, you know, it's about deeply difficult things, um, prison life, what it means to get out, what it means to transition, not just, you know, in all kinds of ways, right, from right. inside to outside, um, you know, trans life itself, trying to stay true to who you, you truly are. Um, and in all that, and because of that, it's also a book about, really about freedom, you know, what it means to be truly free and be truly yourself. And it's a book that gives you um, glimpses of that kind of the joys that tempt you to, to, to live your best life. And that's, you know, what, what you feel in Carlotta all the time is the pull of that, trying to get to her best place, her best self. Mm -hmm. um, and he does a great job of, of taking you through the arc of her story. Mm -hmm. So I would highly recommend this one. And as for Rita Likes, I... The weirdest thing, I mean, there there are no yeah. real real likes, but the funniest thing that kept coming to me was, it's like Mrs. Dalloway. I mean, Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway mm -hmm. was the original stream of consciousness novel, right? Written back mm -hmm. in the 20s. Yep. I mean, could not be more different in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, strict British. Um, it was set during, <laughs> yeah. it was set during, right after World War One, So the 1920s, I think, and, you know, in upper crust Britain and Mrs. Dalloway is this, like this society woman, but the idea of, and she walks out of her house and she is narrating in her head. And that was like groundbreaking at the time. Mm -hmm. Nobody mm -hmm. had done that. And she's narrating her head. And that kept coming to me, even though the characters and the time it's and different. everything yeah. else, yes. could, you know. But other than that, I can't think of anything else that is quite like this, which is why I liked it so much. Mm -hmm. So this one will definitely keep, definitely keep you going. Um, but I think that's all we've got for today. We went through really quickly. It felt very quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we will be back again uh, next month. Won't even be next month because we're a little late in this one. So we're <laughs> and, uh, later this month. We'll later be back later this month to give you a few more books to uh, enjoy. And until then, thanks for joining us for BB Book Buzz. We'll see you next time.